Well, today we're going to discuss shoulder pain with five actual viewers. They reached out to us and we're going to give them options on how to treat it. Mike, do you have more on that? We have carefully looked through their questions and decided the best options for them. So let's get to it. I'm Brad. He, I'm Mike. And Bob is right there. Behind the scenes and together <laughs> with the most famous physical therapy team on the internet. That's right. I mean, in our opinion, of course, once in a while I get that mix, mixed up. So should we go to our first viewer? Yes, yeah, so let's go to our first question. So Ooh. this comes from Rhonda Watts. What can I do at home to help my impingement of shoulder, please? Well, that's a good question, Rhonda, and I really like your name. I was just wondering, Watt is your last name? Because maybe it has to do with wattage, the electrical unit of power. She's a very strong person. <laughs> just making a little humor there. Rhonda, let's get to the problem at hand. Typical impingement symptoms. Let's talk about that first. Oftentimes, it's a single point pain where you can point to an oftentimes is right there, not always, but it's pretty typical. Mike, another one? Typically what happens is when you start lifting your arm and you get about level with your shoulder either in front of you or out to the side, it becomes painful. Sometimes people can push through the pain and then it doesn't hurt as much. And then when they come back down, it might kind of catch again, but then you go through and it's not painful again. Right. That's known as painful arc syndrome. Quite common. Another thing, just reaching back to scratch your head or comb your hair in the back can be very painful. Uh, now, typical uh, do-it-yourself treatment that we can do, we're going to talk about those. Should we go to the first one? The first one you can try is called cross-friction massage. You can just use your fingers for this. If you happen to have a massage gun or tool, you can use that as well. What you want to do with cross-friction is you find the tendon or the painful area if it's in your shoulder up here and the tendons run down this way obviously depending upon where they're going but you're going to go the opposite direction i'm pressing kind of firmly here so mm -hmm. it might be a little tender you will just do this for one to two minutes you can go up to five and just kind of press it's going to be uncomfortable but when you're done it should feel better what you're doing is getting a lot of blood flow to the tendons and your rotator cuff which carry the nutrients to help heal it faster right now this is common with when you have that painful arc syndrome, that supraspinatus tendon is typically the one uh, that we're dealing with. If your fingers will, actually will get sore unless you got really strong hands. If you happen to have a massage gun, they work great for this particular uh, treatment. Use the ball like this. So I'm gonna take that and we're not gonna go like this and beat into the tendon. We're gonna go with the ball. You have to have the ball one. Go sideways and go across it like this feels good. If it gives you sharp pain, you need to not do it. It's too early. Do this for a minute or two. Uh, you'll have good response to it and uh, it'll feel good after you're done. Let's go to another common treatment. Another option you can try is simply hanging. You can use a pull-up bar. These are hanging handles. Whatever you have around the house, you can grab onto comfortably. And what you're going to do is not hang all the way down, but just drop, stretch your shoulders above your head like this. Notice my feet are still on the ground. I'm getting a good stretch here. You can hold this for time. You can go 15, 30 seconds if it feels too much. You can go up to two to five minutes if you really want, as long as it is feeling good and just hang. Over time, if you feel comfortable and you're strong enough, you can lift your feet off. You're going to get more stretching and distraction in the shoulder joint, but it's not necessary. That's right. Again, I want to emphasize, just do that cautiously, particularly the first time or two. You should uh, mention, though, if you're ooh. short, you oh. can't reach. <laughs> You yeah. just take a stick of sorts, whatever you have at your house, and then reach up as far as you comfortably can with the painful side, and then just kind of lean into it. You can get a similar feeling. It's not quite the amount of force to pull, but we realize some people can't actually get their arm way above their head to start. Right. Now, if you do use a stick and you find it slipping on the chair or whatever, simply take your shoe off, put it in there, and it allows it to grip. Really nice little solution. And lastly, we do want to talk about some... This is a typical therapy treatment that works the 
posterior part of the shoulder and works posture. You simply are going to pull back with your hands going down to your belt or to your belt line or just below the belt line where your pockets are. And watch me squeeze my shoulder blades back behind me and think about your chest going out. There we go. So again, posture and rotator cuff muscles, putting them back in place where they need to be so the joint lines up to minimize that impingement. It's a nice traditional exercise. It's good to do all three of those because first is massaging, then we're stretching, then we're strengthening, which all work in conjunction to help with impingement. That's right. Good luck with those, and I have a feeling you're going to find these very helpful. <laughs> this next question comes from Laura Johnson. We're going to condense it a bit because it's kind of wordy. Essentially, she was unloading some bark from her truck, and she started getting some shoulder pain. Now, whenever she reaches up into the cupboard for things or puts her jacket on, she's getting a lot of pain in her shoulder joint itself. Her pain is not in her shoulder blade. All right, Laura. Laura Johnson, sorry to hear about your pain. You have the typical what we call weekend warrior syndrome, out working very aggressively on something you probably have a passion for, working hard, then you have the symptoms you talk about. Very typical. All right, Laura, before we get on to the exercises that are going to help you out, I do want to address uh, for other people, if you do tolerate ibuprofen, I think a good way to approach it is take the amount for you, three times a day for three days in a row. I've talked to a couple different doctors. They really like that. I like it because you don't overdo it. And if it's going to do you some good, it will do it in that amount of time. Now, the first exercise, there's two ways to do it. Mike's going to show the option with a stretch band. And I'm going to show the same option with a dumbbell line on my side. So we're going to pretend that... Uh, I have a right shoulder problem. Mike, are you going to do it with the left shoulder? I'm going to do the left shoulder. Go ahead. You show them your... your so way. this is an often neglected or weaker muscle group in your shoulder. We're going to work on external rotation. All that is is bringing your arm out to your side like this. Notice my elbow is staying tight. I'm putting a towel here so I don't cheat. A lot of people start doing this. Mm. This is not what we want. Keep the towel there. Rotate out any band you have will work. You can do three sets of 10 to 15 reps over time as long as this feel good, slow, and controlled, and do that every other day at least. There you go. Nice job, Mike. Now, if you do not have that, but you have a... Now, you can actually use a can of soup or anything that weighs about a pound. Uh, I'm using a three-pound one here. That's probably going to be a little too strong for a lot of people, but the mechanics are like this. Elbow against the ribs, start down here, and then come up with a 90-degree bend at the elbow. So we're not down here doing this or this. It's this. Clean motion, good control. Again, up to 10. You will feel these muscles right back in here, those posterior rotator cuff muscles uh, get to be fatigued. Again, there should be no pain involved with this. The next tip we have is when you are reaching up into the cupboard to put something away, make sure the object is close to your body. Say, I, I don't know why you'd put a stick in a cupboard, but this is what I'm holding right now. If you're Far away like this, going up, this is a lot harder and a lot more challenging on your shoulder. If you have it close to you and then you're lifting it up, it's closer to your center of gravity, making it easier and putting less strain on your shoulders. That's right. You can actually do that uh, when you're putting a cup into the cupboard. Try it here and get it in and try it here. Do it with much less painful. It's an interesting concept. The last thing is, this is one of Bob. He, uh, I think he actually invented this stretch. He had impingement and he had extremely good luck with it. Uh, there's two uh, different ways to do it. One is with the stick like this, a four or five foot long stick. Works good if something that's smooth that slides up against your back. Go ahead, you know the chicken wing? I know the chicken Excellent. wing. So what you're gonna do if you're a beginner, this is to help if you struggle reaching behind your shoulder when you're putting on a coat or shirt or whatever. So what you do is start low down here if you're on a stick, and the first trick is to just pull the stick up your back further. Do what you can tolerate. Some people may be down here, others may be up higher. Once you're here for more of a stretch, if you can get up here comfortably, is the chicken wing, which Bob does. So I pull the stick and I'm getting more of 
of a stretch. Really feel it in my shoulder capsule there, and it gets a nice good stretch like this. If this hurts at all, you don't have to do it. Just working your arm up your back will help, and Brad will show another variation you can try. That's right. My voice cracked. Yeah. Just make sure you don't do this if it hurts. This is one of those things that you need to have, has to be healed a little bit along the way. You can do this method with a belt. You put it and have a loop here, put it on your wrist, and uh, a shiny belt works better because it slides over your clothing, and then you work it up here. This is my sore uh, shoulder. Simply relax and allow it to slide up. Little stretch pain is okay, but no sharp pain, absolutely. Uh, we actually had a patient scheduled for surgery. We had her do this exercise. The surgery was canceled. It was very successful, and her shoulder got better. This wasn't the only exercise, but it was one of the primary ones that was working. And you can do it with a towel if you want, like I was showing. There you go. Excellent. All right, good luck with your shoulder. I think we've got some good options for you. Again, remember, listen to exactly how we do it and showed you. Our next question comes from Teresa Wagger. My right shoulder is often sore when I wake up in the morning. How can I sleep differently as a side sleeper? Teresa, you're in luck. We have helped many people, side sleepers, get through the night with shoulder pain. And what you are going to need to do is have a, an abundance of pillows. So go to the store, buy some pillows, take them from your children, your uh, friends, whoever it may be. You'll see you'll need uh, probably three or four. When you're lying on your side, uh, if you sleep, let's see, how, does she say if she sleeps on her sore side or not? Well, you can do both. There so you give go. me that pillow, though, because I want one for my head. So yep. first off, you want to make sure you have an adequate amount of pillows to take pressure off of your shoulder in general, even if this is your good shoulder. So, for example, if you were to sleep on your painful shoulder... Correct pillow height for your neck. This will be different for everyone. Maybe you need one, maybe you need three. Then we're gonna create a little canal here and this is where my shoulder, painful shoulder, is going to rest. Now notice when I start rolling onto it, I feel more pressure on my shoulder. If I'm slightly at an angle like this, there's less pressure. This pillow helps take some of the pressure off the shoulder joint as well as these. So if you need to sleep on that side for whatever reason, this is a way you can try. Another good suggestion is to have something under your knees because that gets uncomfortable too if your bony knees are hitting each other like that. Right, a common complaint is with people, oh, when I lay on my side, I get un uncomfortable after a couple hours and inherently shift. But if you use a pillow between the knees, it's gonna allow you to feel more comfortable. It's amazing how much better that feels. Mike, I do wanna <laughs> give her one little tip. Now, if you do have the right number of pillows here so your head is in a neutral alignment and it's not tilting down, typically it's two pillows for a lot of people. That shoulder right here, I've done this with a lot of patients, I say just slide that shoulder like that. It tips you back that way a little bit, but it really unloads that shoulder joint. Um, and then you don't have to make the eerie canal with the pillow here, but try it both ways. See what works best for you. And uh, I think you'll find this uh, very, uh, very helpful for your sleeping. Can I have my pillows back? Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah, so yeah. what you can do, because most side sleepers like to change sides, is you need to prop it up even when your bad arm oh, is up top. Oh, I forgot about this. So place one pillow here, and you can put another pillow angled, get it kind of under your armpit, and this will help put a little gap in your shoulder there. Oftentimes this can relieve some pain you may be having as well. Obviously, if you're comfortable like this, you can do that, but most of the time people need mm. a little bit of a gap in their shoulder there and makes it more comfortable. Yeah, and you, that's for the sh painful shoulder on top. Yes. Yeah. And again, I always say oh, put one there as well. You're a pillow monster. Yeah, so you got one, two, three, four. Yeah, you'll need five pillows. Thank you, and good luck. I really think this is going to help you out. Our next question comes from BH6. My left shoulder neck always seems to bother me and I have knots. I'm right-handed. Lately, I've had higher area neck pain. They are also 47, play tennis quite a bit and move boxes at work a lot and try different things, but they would like some more suggestions. Well, you're in luck. I think we've got some good suggestions for you. I picked you because I liked your initials, BH. You know, Brad Hynek, so, yeah. We I got think I heard of him. <laughs> we got something in common. Uh, anyways, your scenario, I really want you to stand up and turn around, Mike. Uh, let's see, we've got her, his left shoulder, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, thank you. All right. <laughs> Well, we're going to have to do it on the right, but it's the other shoulder. I really think your shoulder blade is actually depressed. 
physically, not psychologically. It's <laughs> down. And that's stretching out the muscles from here to here. And what we need to do is elevate that shoulder blade, take the stress off of there. It's going to help with the neck pain. Maybe you're having some headaches as well. Uh, and we need to stretch out the muscles here. So this is a nice problem because it's not real hard to fix. You just need to do these two exercises on a consistent basis. Mike is good at showing these and uh, I'll watch and keep my mouth shut if I can. So we got these from our friend Rick Olderman is the PT. So check out his work if you're interested more in this. The first one is basically a child's pose stretch. We call it a prayer stretch. What you're gonna do is keep your shoulders in place and then I'm gonna sit my butt on my heels. Notice as I go in this position, my shoulders start naturally lifting above me and I feel a stretch. If you're not feeling much of a stretch, you can extend your hands out more. Hold this for five to 10 seconds, come back up and you're gonna repetitiously keep doing that. Now, if your left side is more painful, what you can try to do is reach over to your right hand and get a little more stretch there. I would do this 10 times each day. Yeah, so BH, just so you know, that stretch is, again, moving that shoulder blade upwards, stretching the tight muscles out down here, and then you do this one first, followed up by the uh, strengthening exercise that we call the pinky exercise up against the wall. Mike, help them out. So for this, you're gonna need to find an open wall space or you can do it on a closed door as well. So if it's just your left side, you can only do your left side. If you wanna do both at the same time, it's not gonna hurt anything. What you're gonna do is pinky sides to the elbow are gonna make contact with the wall the entire time. Now I'm going to slide my arms up the wall and as I go up, I'm gonna kinda of shrug a little bit to help. And we're gonna hold up top for five to 10 seconds, breathe, and then slowly come back down. Just make sure you're keeping contact with the wall the entire time. If you can only go to here, then just go to here and do what you can and back down. Over time, you should be able to slide up more and really feel a stretch and activation of the shoulder blade muscles. Right, that whole idea of getting that shoulder up towards the left ear to strengthen the muscles here to get that shoulder blade elevated where it needs to be and get you out of that painful syndrome. All right, very good. Simple exercises, just make sure you do them at least once a day. After you do them for a while, do them twice a day, morning and in the evening, uh, and it'll help accelerate the, the healing process. Our next question comes from Curious One. For what kinds of problems is PT preferable to shoulder replacement surgery? I have osteoarthritis. All right, so let's talk about, uh, I'm gonna relate this to someone I know who has very similar symptoms. Uh, bone on bone this person has on one shoulder. Uh, they recommended shoulder replacement. He was not, act, uh, wasn't fond of that. Talk to me about it. I said, uh, go to the surgeon and talk to the surgeon personally at your next visit. They did. They came up with an option, therapy exercises to strengthen the rotator, rotator cuff muscles and some stretches to help get that bone or the humeral head in position properly, along with an injection that would be the surgeon's obvious uh, discretion. In this particular case, the person three weeks after the injection with therapy is now doing very well, swimming up to 2,000 yards overhand. He was a very good swimmer to begin with. Uh, so it worked for that person. Doesn't mean it will work for you, but these are options. And if you're not happy with what your surgeon has to say, do not be afraid to get a second opinion. That is something a lot of people don't feel comfortable with, but I strongly recommend it. Get a surgeon that fits you and that you feel comfortable with. Most of the time with any shoulder injury, trying therapy first is not going to harm anything or do any worse. If it helps, good. If it doesn't help, then you always have surgery. Right. And, and actually, if you do have surgery, therapy before surgery is an excellent idea because it conditions the muscles and allows the range of motion so you have a better post therapy results. Yeah, you're going to have therapy after surgery too. There you go. All right, good luck with your shoulder. I know arthritis is a big problem and it's not fun to deal with. All right, that was all five of them, Mike. Should that we carry all. on? We should. If you want to check out more videos on shoulder pain, specifically impingement exercises, you can click the video link on the screen. There you go. Click. Oh yeah, subscribe. We forgot to mention. <laughs> yeah, do subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Bob and Brad, the two most famous this
physical therapist on the internet.